Alright, hello everybody, welcome to twitch.tv forward slash Kyanite. As you may have guessed, my name is Kyanite, and alongside me is Chewy. Good morning, good morning. It's way too early to be doing anything uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, be worrying about, but I'm hyped. I have to say, that music in the intro just got me going, got me ready for the first game of the day, so I'm excited for this one. Nice, yes, I want hype. But anyways, we've got Team Wolf. Versus the ninjas in pajamas. Um, what's your prediction on this one, Chewie? What do you think of the, of this matchup? Well, usually I'm incredibly bad with predictions, and I get everything wrong. Whenever I call something to go and, and, and happen, it never actually does happen. But I think it's a, a pretty safe bet for everybody to say that Nip are going to take this one. I'm not quite sure what the stats were in lounge for uh, people betting. The I think skins, it was 7% to uh, yeah, Wolves. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. I knew that it was in the 90 ranges for, yeah. for Nip, so uh, pretty damn high, and, and that's such a huge thing, of course, because as far as I'm aware, I don't believe Wolf have actually attended an international event before, um, so I'm actually quite excited to see how they play. Going up against Nip is no easy task for any team, really, but especially for a team who have got... Uh, this kind of uh, new air about them that we don't really know too much about them. I'm looking forward to seeing what we get. Yeah, obviously, like you said, there is the element of surprise. No one's really seen seen what they're capable of doing before. Um, just as we go full screen, there we go. Uh, oh, sh shit, the intro is playing. Okay. <laughs> Completely forgot about that intro. But yeah, guys, in case you ain't realised yet, this is ESL1. And we're going to go live, as it says at the, on the top of your screens, Group A, first stage. We've got the Indians in Team Wolf up against the Swede powerhouses in Ninjas in Pyjamas. And I'm not sure if your GoTV is lacking gun models right now, but what a shot from Astar to open things up. And, well, Chewy, welcome to Cologne. Yeah, here we go. This is what we wanted already. Uh... Uh, an interesting kill to start things off there. He had that CZ75, but he knocked Fliflaren out uh, for Flaren, sorry, out for the count in round number one we go. So let's see what the Indian team here can do. Of course, this is the team comprising of Ritz, Rix, Ace, and Mithil, and Astar as well, I do believe. And they've got Kassad as a coach, who, if I'm not mistaken, was actually quite a famous 1.6 player. So, here we go. Into the game. It's still relatively slow. We've had that opening pick, but as of yet, not too much going on. And in comes the push. It looks like it could be mid to be by the sound of things. They're getting taken down, though. Um, with a lot of shots coming their way. Freiburg's going to respond, but we're putting up a good fight here in round number one, Kainai. Yeah, and A-Stars hasn't done too badly himself. He managed to get two kills on this B-bomb site, but the ninjas do more or less have full control of this B-bomb site. We're going to have two Indians rotating through at B, B, B ramp, and Mithil, who's actually gone unnoticed. He's going to be coming through tunnels, and are the Indians going to do it? Yes, they are! Not a bad way to introduce themselves, Chewy. And I don't think any of us saw that coming, but fair play to them. No, exactly. Fair play to them, indeed. I'm not quite sure what's going on with your game models. Mine's absolutely fine. I've All got right, gun I might have models. To reconnect. Let me reconnect. Um, everything's fine my end, so hopefully it won't be too much of an issue. But there we go. Already, uh, kind of what you would call an upset to start things off. Uh, Ninjas in pajamas losing the T side pistol round there here on Dust Two. So. This is ESL1 Cologne. We're stoked for this one. Of course, you are joining us here on the second stream. We are the official English community stream, as things stands, and ESL TV underscore CS are going to be the main stream all the way from Germany, and they're going to be bringing you Epsilon versus Hellraisers, I do believe, to start the day off. But we got the NIP team on your screen today to start things off. I'm not quite sure what other games we're going to be covering yet. It depends on what the guys in Cologne decide. But uh, here we go. Now we've got Kainite with some gun models. So into round number two we go. <laughs> here we do. And the CTs naturally with Famases, But it is going to be the Swedes to <laughs> explode on this B-bomb site. We've got two kills already. But it was that Wolf player who managed to get the frag at long. And well, they're slowly turning it around. They have more HP. They have stronger weapons. A-Star, yet again, probably the man of the match so far for the Indians. But that bomb is ticking, and the Ninjas are trying to defend it. But we do have Rix, who's going to push through long. Nails get right in the head. And, well, it looked for one moment, Chewy, that the Ninjas, they got that two-man early lead, push it off short. It looked like, yeah, they were going to put their foot down on this A-bomb site. And even though they only had those CZ-75s, it looked like, yeah, they're going to get the bomb down, and they're going to play it cool, calm, and collected from there. 
But I've really been impressed with Wolf's retakes. I really have. Um, they retook the B bomb site brilliantly. They pushed in together. One of them went unnoticed through tunnels. And they did the same thing there on the A bomb site, even though they were significantly outnumbered at one point. And who would have thought this? 2 0 to the Indians. And what a way to start. <laughs> this hu huge major major event for CSGO. Yeah, this is exactly what we love about ESL 1. Of course, a lot of people predicting after the upsets at G3 that there wouldn't quite be as many upsets at uh, ESL 1 Cologne. And it's not saying that we're counting out NIP. Of course, this is NIP that we're talking about here. But, uh, you know, we're just saying good start here for Wolf. That's what we like. But it looks like it's going to be the early buy for NIP. They did manage to get a lot of frags in both rounds played so far. And they got the bomb down both rounds, I do believe, as well. Which means that uh, they are going to be able to buy up here and to start things off. Exist has got the first frag. So that's going to be Ritz out of the way. And let's see what's going on here. As it looks like that bomb is actually stacked up in mid at the second. NIP just happy to get those early picks. And that's going to be Mithil down for the count as well. So as soon as the ninjas in pyjamas from Sweden get those rifles in their hand, it looks like it's back to normal proceedings. They've got control of the A-bomb site right now. And although we've said that we've been impressed with Wolf's retakes in the first two rounds, I have a feeling they're not going to be able to take this one here, Kainite. Well, let's bear in mind that in the second round, they retook up against ninjas in pyjamas who were playing with only CZ-75s. And on the pistol round, the pistol round's a pistol round. Now from this round onwards, this is where Wolf are really going to be tested. The ninjas, the cash is flowing, they've got their first round on the board. Counter Strike well and truly is a game of momentum. Um, and now that they have the AK-47s, Fifth Flyer might, uh, might opt to go for the AWP. No, they're sticking with an all-rifle setup. But yeah, game mod Wolf, they're being forced onto an eco now. But after this round, where it's weapons against weapons, it's going to be from that point onwards where we're, where we're really going to have to see what Wolf are made of. Yeah, as soon as they can get those full buys in hand, then it will be uh, uh, down to them to show us exactly what they can do up against the team from Sweden. Get right's going to start things off, though, on the B bomb site. That bomb is actually still back towards T spawn, and Ritz pushing aggressively down there on uh, Catwalk has worked really well. The Flaren's still in spawn. He's decided just to stick back here and not move anywhere at the minute, and it looks like it's going to be a good decision, decision Sorry, as the CTs were pushing aggressively down mid there. Didn't quite work. Ritz has picked up an AK-47 for his troubles, but he's not going to be able to pick up this round. It's a one-on-four situation, and once again, the bomb has been planted. So Nip so far, although they lost the first two rounds, they can take the fact that they've planted the bomb every single round as a good advantage here. Obviously, that's going to help their economy a whole lot. And the score's going to be all evened up here going into round number five. It will be 2-2. Two, two. And uh, this is the time for Wolf to really show us what they're made of once they get these full rifles and set up in hand. Yeah, the thing about Nip is they're, they're full of experience. They're not going to try and push the CT and do silly things like Freiburg just did. Obviously, they're trying to stop him from saving that weapon, but he managed to get two kills, and it goes to show that the Indians really are on point based on what we've seen so far. Him in Ritz and A-Star, personally, have really impressed me so far. But here we go. The CTs are going to buy up... Uh... No. They're going to stay they're on the not. Eco. They're not. They're okay, they're going to stay on the oh, they, 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 they don't have enough money. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. So they are going to stick with the CZ-75s. But Ritz has managed to save that AK-47. And he's going to take that AK-47 towards the B bomb site. But unfortunately, it is going to be Freiburg to take the bomb towards the A bomb site. Yeah, so, it uh, will be. Here we go. The bomb's being dropped at the top of mid. As uh, exists slowly scans short. And he will get that first opening frag onto uh, Mithil. And that's a Wolf really have a massive tag, don't they? Every time they get a kill on my screen, all I see is Wolf. I yeah, can't I know. Make out who uh, specifically got the kill. But there we go, as expected. The ninjas in pajamas. They're using the fact that they've got those big weapons in hand to their advantage. But they did lose two men, and the Indians will be happy with that. Yeah, they will do, of course, when you're on an eco. If you can uh, pick up any frags at all, it's going to pay in your favour. And here we go, now they're going to be able to buy by the looks of things. So in comes the full buy from Wolf. And Ninjas in Pyjamas happy with their money as well by the looks of things. Forrest did die with that AWP in hand. Luckily, I believe Freiburg was the man to pick that up for him. So he's going to have that at the start of the sixth round here. And for the first time in the game, we see Ninjas in Pyjamas in the lead here on the T side. And of course, Wolf, you know, they're going to be happy with the start they got, picking up two rounds. Nip have responded with three in a row. And that was, you know, such a crucial turning point in the early stages here when Nip were able to get that early buy in the three round, in the third round, sorry, and then uh, capitalize on that and force Wolf down onto an eco. But let's see what they can do now in round number six. Wolf, of course, on the slightly less favoured 
uh, CT side here on Dust2. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. And by the looks of things, Nip are going for another mid push. Maybe they're going to boost onto Catwalk and try and go to A. But the CT is still holding strong here. Yeah, judging by the fact that the bomb isn't made and get right is in upper tunnels, it does currently look likely that they might fall back on a mid to B push. And if they do, they'll have both A Star and Ritz to uh, come up against in that B bomb site. But Freiburg with the nade onto the A bomb site, putting Ace down to only 77 points of health as the ninjas slowly but surely try to edge their way closer to one of these two bomb sites, and the bomb is uh, going to go towards long now, so it wouldn't surprise me if Fiflaren does get this opening frag at long. Freiburg is slowly going to creep towards the A bomb site, and I think as soon as they get this opening frag on long, which they should do, <laughs> Rick's managed to get one, but Exist shuts him down, and here we go. Get right is going to be the man to lead the charge, along with his left-hand man in Freiburg. Another brilliant headshot from Get Right, and finally we're starting to see the ninjas assert their dominance down on this game. They're starting, they've woken up, they're nice and fresh now. They're starting to pop heads. They're starting to pull off the shots we normally see them pull off. And A-Star now stuck between a rock in a very, very hard place. And he's three versus one. And he's going to go for it. But look who it is. It's uh, the CS legend in the flesh in Forest to shut him down. 4-2 is the score. It will be indeed. Nip looked pretty comprehensive there. We did have a couple of frags go down in favour of Wolf, but wasn't quite enough Nip. And actually, somebody said it in the GoTV chat. They just said the majestic one-taps from Nip. And I can't really say it any better myself. But just getting those entry frags... Sums yeah, Nip up. It really does. It really does. You know, getting those uh, easy shots down range, finishing things off in style, and getting themselves on that bomb site with what looked like relative ease. And they're going to get rewarded for it here, because once again, we see Wolf down on another eco. So, uh, they've not really had was in the hand for too many rounds here, unfortunately for them. We've got Mitchell Hill actually pushing aggressively down uh, long, and this is what we keep seeing from Wolf so far, is that whenever they're on an eco, they like to push aggressively, they like to really put it in the faces of the T-side, and it's working for them here. They've been rewarded, well. because it's a two versus three advantage here, and they've got two rifles, kind of. This is looking a bit worrying here for Nip. It is, but Forrest still has the big green gun in the AWP and exists. The uh, NIP leader, of course, is still trying to rally the troops in lower tunnels with that uh, lovely flame serpent AK-47. Brilliant shot from Exist, and maybe, just maybe, that's exactly what the doctor ordered for the Swedes to turn this round back in their favour. They need to pick up the bomb. And they will do now. Exist is uh, expecting someone to be in and around double doors and expected correctly. And it does look like Chewy that it does look like they're going to go towards this A bomb site where there aren't any CTs defending at the moment, but I understand what Wolf are trying to do. They don't want to drop one by one, but it is going to be Exist to fall. Ritz, who managed to push from behind and take him down, and now Forrest is one versus two. This is an absolutely huge round here coming in for Wolf. They've really impressed so far. Ace is going to find that player, and Forrest down to 27 HP. If there's any player in CS who I would put my money on to still do this one versus two, this is probably the man. He's going to get the bomb down. No, he's not. Ace jumps in the air, headshot through the box as well. And that was an absolutely huge round coming in there for Wolf. Also, another quick thing, shout out to our first two subscribers of the day, Crow, OP, and Burnsy Lift. Thank you very much for subscribing, guys. That's always a good start to the day when we see you coming on board. But, wow, Wolf. You know, we've not heard much about them. This is their first international, as we said. And on an eco, they just knocked ninjas in pyjamas down and really put them in their place and said, come on, give us a good game because uh, we're not going down easily here. Well, NIP, they've been uh, dr pretty much dropping like flies on the mass majority of game mods, uh, pistol slash eco rounds. And obviously, it's something they need to fix, and they need to fix soon because they need more than four rounds on the T side of uh, the others two. And... You know what, I still think the ninjas will manage to pull through, but it's no lie that they haven't been at their best recently. I feel sorry for my friend who has $600 on Nip to win. <laughs> oh dear, well yeah, that must have definitely got him sweating after that game, but you know, that's a huge topic of discussion that we can go on about uh, in a little while. But let's start things off in round number 8, and Forrest already down to 23 HP, so he's got to watch out with that AK-47 in hand. Ritz down to 40, but we've got no indication about where that bomb could be uh, eventually heading as of yet. And there's already only 48 seconds left on the clock. It is going to be making its way up towards Catwalk as things stand, but Nip with no players going down towards long. I'm wondering if they're going to go mid to B. No, it looks like they could be going catwalk. And this is the thing that we all love about Dust 2, is that you can switch it up like this, and you can change things when you need to. But Nip, looking like they're just trying to get some information at the second, looking like they're trying to find out where their CTs are. But 
Wolf from India holding strong. In comes the push towards mid. That's going to be the first kill for Freiburg there. And it's going to be a mid to B. Let's see if they can get in there successfully and get that bomb down. There's only going to be one CT player on the site. He's going to go down as well. And this should be a relatively easy hold here coming in. For ninjas in pajamas, maybe not so. They've got to get that bomb down quick, can't I? Yeah, they do, and they're going to try and hold this B site. Freiburg does what Freiburg does best with the rifle, and Freiburg will get four. And uh, again, Ninjas, it seems like, just when it seems like they're slowly going to wake up, they end up losing an eco round or doing something stupid and uh, let the uh, Wolf players back into the game. But Wolf, they won't be too downhearted with what they've done so far. They'll be over the moon with, with, with how this game stands at the moment. We can see the pick and predictions at the top of the scoreboard. And 11% of you guys think Wolf can win this. Wow, well, that's an well, interesting stat. Yeah, that is. That is an interesting <laughs> stat, especially after uh, what we've seen so far today. But into round number nine we go. And once again, because Nip have won that, uh, that last round, they are going to force Wolf down onto an eco, and that's really the thing, is that we've seen so many ecos come in here from the team from India, and yeah, okay, they won that last one, um, but still, you've got to wonder what sort of damage they would do to Nip here if they did have uh, rifles in hand. Uh, Nip holding strong, though, it's going to be a 5 versus 2 situation as things stand. The aggressive pushes from the CTs didn't quite work as well as it has previously. It looks like Nip have realised what they do now, are holding back and just letting them come to them and picking them off with their all powered rifles here. So Riggs is going to be the last man standing with a 5.7 in hand. The Flaren should pick him off any second if he does decide to push through long doors, which I have a feeling he will do anytime soon. Uh, but the score's going to be 6 3 here in favour of Nip. And, um, you know, I still don't think that Wolf have shown us exactly quite what they can completely do here. They've had a good couple of rounds, but uh, if they don't want Nip to start running away with things here on the T side, they've got to make sure that they get those rifles in hand and can convert off that. Yeah, well, Rix has managed to salvage Freiburg's AK-47. He's gotten two kills so far, and obviously this ain't really going to help NIP as far as the economical situation is concerned. But I tell you what, Chewy, these Indians really have been on point aim-wise so yeah. far. Um, oh, they definitely have. With pistols or rifles, but I think... NIP deserve a pat on the back. We said that they needed to tweak their anti-eco approach. We saw Get Right in Upper Tunnels trying to trying to restrict the firefights to long distance. We saw what Fiflaren was doing, and we saw the rest of the guys sticking together at mid so that if, if one of them did end up going down somewhere on short or in and around double doors, they'd be able to get the return frag uh, nice and fast. So here we go. It is going to be a buy round, and Chewy, A-Star has gone for the AWP, and it's the first time we see Wolf with an AWP in this game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. As you said, their shots have been on point, and even down on low HP when uh, you've not got much going for them on an eco, they've been able to pick up a big few kills on Nip uh, to force the ninjas in pajamas to rebuy some of those all important rifles. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Astar can do here, or A Star, sorry. Forrest is going to smoke off mid doors though, so that's going to shut him off to start things up. And he's actually going to rotate his way back from CT over towards the A bomb site. But still, no kills here as of yet. But Flaren's going to get caught first. Nice headshot there to take down Ricks to start things off there. And that's going to be a big kill. Let's see what that can do. It's going to focus all of the attention by the looks of things of the CTs down onto Long after that first kill. And in comes the push from Catwalk here. And we know what work Nick can do on this A-bomb site when they get those early entry frags and push their way through. Ritz is going to find one towards Miz though. Lots of shots go down. He's going to find two there. And that's a lovely kill into Forest to even the situation up into a four on four. Yeah, it's important that the Indians keep getting these return frags. NIP, they've pulled back. They've uh, fallen back towards uh, Long. Uh, A-Star is going to drop Freiburg. And he's expecting a few of these Swedes to be coming towards Long. And he's gotten one frag already. Spots the feet of Exist. He gets one before getting taken down by Get Right. But are we going to see yet another Indian round on the board? Yes, we are. 6 4. Wow. That was a big round. NIP, there we go. wake up. NIP, <laughs> wake up. This really isn't the NIP we're used to seeing. No. Um, but credit where it's due to Wolf. They look really. In they looked incredibly solid on that A bomb site. The way they changed their setup really, really fast as soon as they lost that early man. Um, and again, they're getting the return frags. They look confident. That that player at mid who just thought, right, yeah, I'm going to peek mid. I don't care. I want to take these ninjas in pajamas players on. I don't care. They're not better than me. And Wolf yet again asserting their dominance down by dropping the uh, NIP danger man and get right with a grenade. 
Well, certainly interesting indeed from what we see. Incomes exist, and in some shots down, and Ace actually with two lovely shots there. That's going to be Freiburg and exist, taken down on Catwalk, and it's all going to be left in the hands of Fiflaren and Forrest. And this has been a relatively quick round indeed. And those two last T players are going to be rotating right the way back round to T spawn. You're going to wonder if they're going to go around to the B bomb site. They have plenty of time to be able to do so, but they are on very little HP, 27 and 23 between them. So really not much to go by, of course. We know how strong these two players are, and we know that they can still get these shots down on low HP, but I've got to give it up to Game God Wolf once again for just how phenomenally they're showing what they can do here. They were the favourites, as far as I'm aware, um, to progress through the Indian qualifiers and make their way to Cologne, and we're exactly seeing why here. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering what the combination is here. Obviously, you know, we don't want to take anything away from either team. We know what Nip can do, and... Wolf are showing us what they can do, but at the same time you also do have to take into account whether this is just Nip not performing up to their best standards, or whether Wolf, uh, you know, are really showing their dominance, or whether it's a bit of both, and I think it is. Alright, so there we go, headshot from Fifi, on to A-Star, uh, let's take a quick look at the scoreboard, we've got Rix, to no surprise, 11 kills and 9 deaths. I mean, maybe he should move to Europe and replace Fiflaren, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love Fiflaren. And Exist, you know, you don't see it very often. He's topping the scoreboard with 15 kills and 8 deaths for uh, for n the ninjas in pyjamas. So he is their leader. He uh, is spurring them on. But we do have the Indians on yet another eco. Three CZ-75s and two P250s have come out from Team Wolf. As the ninjas in pyjamas do pretty much what we saw them do last time round. But Get Right is actually going to get pushed in upper tunnels. He gets dropped already. And it's the same old story on these eco rounds. A-Star has been phenomenal with that CZ-75. And we can't really emphasize enough just how kind of powerful that CZ-75 is. And that's exactly what you want to do with that. And I'm wondering if this is the experience from Kassad, of course, uh, the coach for the Indian team, telling them what to do, telling them to get in the face of Nip here with those CZ-75s because they've got the two opening frags. Nip will respond, though, leaving things up into a three-on-three -three situation. Another frag comes in from Exist up from Catwalk there. And Ritz has picked up an AK-47. The bomb has been planted. But again, this is good resilience here from Nip. This is why they're one of the best teams in the world for the fact that even on an antique round when they've suddenly lost two frags and it's a five versus three, they can turn things back in their favor. Exist gets at least a triple there, so that's going to make things eight four. But still, Wolf are going to be happy with those opening two frags. And that's what they want on an eco, bringing it right into the face of the team from Sweden. They are going to be able to buy up here. It's going to be relative force buy. They have got a couple of grenades, but uh, we see a Famas in the hands of Ritz. And if they do lose this round and they don't get a lot of frags on the board here, I think they're going to be down to another eco. And this has just been the thing that's led Wolf in trouble so far, the fact that they're getting knocked down to an eco so easily. If they didn't, then I would have thought that this game could potentially be much closer. Right, here we go. Exist. They've uh, heard someone on short. Freiburg and Exist quick to get the return frags to give the ninjas the one man advantage which they crave as Freiburg leads the charge onto the A bomb site. Catches uh, Rix out in the open. And Freiburg ain't going to miss from there. And I think we're going to see one of these nit players pick up the bomb outside of long yep there we go he's gonna push long and we should see the bomb go down on this uh, a bomb site sometime soon and game mod wolf they're just sitting in the b bomb site they they're, they're probably gonna look to save their weapons and i don't blame them really i don't blame them and we probably are gonna see nine four on the board unless we see wolf reinvent the wheel Unless a sudden nuke just drops on top of the A-bomb site and destroys Nip, which obviously isn't going to happen. Call of Duty -like yeah, right? Just some sort of crazy thing that just happens out of the blue comes in and stops Nip in their tracks. It's not going to happen. 9-4 will be the score. And, you know, it's a good decision here for Wolf to uh, to save these uh, these rifles here. They are going to get chased down, so it'll be interesting to see if they can pick up any kills. And Exist is going to go down as is Get Right. And this is, again, what we've seen quite a lot that when Wolf are saving those rifles, Nip are challenging, and they're not picking up many frags when they go chasing down these rifles on the CT side here. So this is going to hurt the economy of Nip very, very slightly with the fact that they have got to rebuy for three players now. Ritz is going to survive with that AK-47 in hand. And uh, there was quite a lot of casualties overall in that round there, considering the fact that Nip had total dominance on that A-bomb site. But here we go. Two more rounds left in the first half here. 
Really not nice economy for uh, Wolf once again. They are really hurt in that respect. They are going for the CZ75s. We know that they can do damage with that. But it's going to be interesting to see if Nip have just had enough of their aggressive CT pushes and what they're going to do. But that's going to be the first kill down. Forest with York onto Ace. Yep, good kill from Forrest, obviously only up against Ace and a CZ-75. I'm not quite sure why Ace was trying to peek double doors. He was never going to one-tap Forrest at such a long distance with the CZ. But look who it is, it's Ritz. He went aggressive on short, but quickly punished by Freiburg. Forrest getting in on the action with his second kill of the round. And I really am getting all these eco rounds, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> and down goes uh, Mithril, or Mithil. Mithril, he's playing too much for the And there we go, 10-4 in favour of NIP. And we should see a buy round come in from Wolf. Yep, they, they uh, all have more than $5,000 each. So... This is an important round. 10-5 or 11-4, what do you think? I, I, I mean, I'm hoping for the, for the sake of you know, the game and, and how close we want this to be, that it's going to be 10-5. You know, a typical kind of bog standard uh, score that you want as a CT on Dust 2 is 9-6. If you get a 9-6, then you're going to be happy with that. Anything more, you're going to be really rolling and you're going to be getting yourself going. 10-5 is still doable. Yes, it's against Nip, but Wolf have had some big rounds here. And you've got to wonder, again, number one, if their economy was any better, whether they'd be able to get more rounds on the board. And number two, whether there's any, you know, kind of opening game land jitters going on for them, um, and whether that's played a fact uh, factor into them not picking up as many rounds as they would have liked here. But still, 10 for looking potentially good for them. Freiburg with the pizza nade onto the A-bomb site. And yeah, I do agree. If they can get 10-5 here, they're going to be happy. Yeah, we saw NIP, with it being the last round, they bought two AWPs, trying to get uh, a few tags through the doors. And I think... Uh, if Lauren decided to drop it in the end, which made sense. They are going to slowly embark upon this A-bomb site where Mithil, by the looks of things, has managed to dink Forrest. Freiburg is going to come in and try and sweep up the action. Ooh. Ace gets one, but one ain't going to be enough to stop the Swedes. Slowly but surely creeping their way into the A-bomb site and Fifth Lauren lands a headshot. And four versus two. And the second I was going to say it was doable because two of the NIP players are on very low HP. In a blink of an eye, they go down and auto director completely misses it. But 11-4, <laughs> even though when you look at the scoreline, it looks very one-sided, and I think credit where it's due to NIP, their years and years of experience, they've got loads of experience under their belts, it came into action, particularly when they needed to change it around, when they noticed uh, stuff wasn't going right, they were mature about it, they took a step back, they didn't get stressed out, but... I don't think the scoreline is really doing Wolf any favours. I think they probably did merit a 10-5 or a 9-6 based on, on their performance in many of those eco rounds as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And uh, having a look at the scoreboard there, you can see at the half-time mark, Exist and Freiburg, in terms of fragging, really the two that have been impressing. 17-4 and 9 for Freiburg at the top there. And Exist, in 15 rounds, 20 kills and only half the deaths. So uh, really impressive performance from him. And I think that was the key thing there uh, from Nip, just the fact that they were getting those, uh, those, you know, those quick frags, as we said earlier on, and put it into terms of the uh, majestic taps. And I think that was one of the main things that was going on for Nip there. You know, when they were landing their headshots in with those lovely AK-47s, they were pretty much taking the round there. It was just when they were getting caught out by Wolf in their crazy eco pushes um, that they looked a bit shaky, but 11-4 is going to be the halftime score. 30 seconds until the teams will switch, and we'll be back on the second half here. And um, this is a very important pistol round here coming in from the team from India. They've got to take this one. Yeah, if NIP win this CT side pistol round, you'd expect them to capitalise on the next two rounds and um, to give them three rounds in a row. And obviously that'll put the ninjas in pyjamas at 14 rounds, meaning they'd only need two more rounds to emerge victorious out of the game. So, we saw... MTS game game god Wolf take the pistol round when uh, when they were playing as counter terrorists on the uh, it, it, during the first half. So you know what, they were winning a lot of eco rounds, particularly up against the AK-47s that NIP had. They looked solid with pistols, and I'm going to put my neck on the line and say yeah, they're on the more favoured T side. They've got those uh, strong Glocks as we know in CS:GO. Um, if they buy armor and rush somewhere together, who knows? I see no reasons why they uh, can't perhaps get this uh, round on the board.
Oh no, I completely agree with that indeed. So here we go, pistol round of the second half here. And another thing to point out if you don't know too much about ESL 1 Cologne is that this is only a best of one in this uh, stage of the tournament. As soon as uh, we're out of group stages, it is going to be uh, best of threes, but best of ones to start things off here. And lovely work coming in from Ritz to take down two players for Nip. Uh, that's going to be Mythil as well, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, getting uh, the kill on to another Nip player. If Flam's going to go down, and wow, Kainite, this was what just did I dominance. You? What dominance. did I tell you? Yeah, the Indians definitely masters of the pistol rounds based on what we've seen so far. And I just want to apologise about the lack of X-ray. I thought something looked a bit different, but uh, I have turned X-ray on now, so apologies about that, guys. <laughs> it's early in the morning. It's like not even nine o'clock here, and too early for us casters. So you'll have to give us some slack there. But Wolf aren't going to give Nip any slack. They've taken the pistol round here on the second side without taking a single casualty. They also got the bomb down as well. So this is the time for them. Here we go, Wolf. You're on the more favoured T side. You've got six rounds to go to bring it back to an even pegging. And they've got to show us what they're made of fully now. Yeah, they do. Three AK-47s and two Galils. They're going to be the weapons of choice for the Indians. We can have Ricks, who's going to be slowly waiting outside of Long. We saw three nades, I think it was, going towards Long. Fifi and Get Right are going to be the two men to hold Long, as far as the CTs are concerned. And Wolf, a nice slow methodical play. It does look like they are going to go towards Short, where they'll have both Exist and Fiflaren to deal with in and around Graffiti. So it'll be interesting to see how this round pans out. Oh yeah, it most definitely will be indeed. And uh, well, I'm actually going to spot that player from Goose. I'm not sure if you put any shots down range. Missile was taking down at 84 HP, but to start things off here, Ritz is going to get one. He's not going to get two, though. Forrest is going to get that C775 into the head, and he's going to reward himself by picking up the AK-47 and a couple of grenades. Wolf is going to find a place. Sorry, that's Ricks there. I do apologize, but he's going to get turned on by Get Right, and he's going to go down as well. And here we go. Is this going to be the eco win here for Nip? I think if it is, it's really going to put Wolf in a difficult situation. They have got the bomb down, but it's a two versus three retake, and I'm not going to put this past Nip whatsoever, especially with the fact that they have two rifles. Well, I'm surprised Get Right didn't pick up that AK-47. Vulcan Exist now has an AK-47, and this is doable for the ninjas. If Exist can just get this opening frag onto A-Star, they're literally millimetres from each other, and Exist has been on fire so far this game. He should get two, or is it going to be Ritz to save the day? No, he does go down, and the defuse will come in, but I don't think he has enough time, Chewie. I'm not sure if he Goodbye, does know he's friend. not. There we go. Goodbye, my friend. In comes the call. The bomb is going to blow up <laughs> so close there for Nip. But on that note, although Nip lost that round and they did lose those all-important rifles that they picked up, you've got to think about how big that was considering the fact they won an eco there. Not only did they almost get that defused, but they all, you know, they, they took out all of the uh, Wolf players, which is going to really um, make their economy interesting here. And Nip just took a close eco round. If, the, if they take this one here, it's really, really badly going to mess up the economy for Wolf. Yeah, it will, but here we go. NIP. Opting to stick with the pistols, which is understandable. Fifth Laren is going to be the only man to stick with his vanilla USB, whilst the rest of them go for the CZ-75s, which we've seen utilised so far this game brilliantly from both sides. Oh yeah, definitely. In, you know, it's one of the most recent additions uh, to CSGO weaponry-wise, and it's certainly one which people are enjoying. Of course, it's basically just a, an automatic P250, really, to put it simply. It's an MP5. Uh, it. Yeah, it which, really which, is. Which, it's just, which, it's is just a, which falls under the pistol category. Yeah, it just absolutely wrecks. It, it's crazy, but uh, you know, it's great to see it. It's adding some more interesting rounds into the game. You can just see some crazy eco bashes, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what work the CZ75 is in the hands of both teams can do for the rest of the game. But in we go. That's going to be two CZ75 uh, frags. Sorry, coming in for Forest and Get Right, and it's going to be a three on three. Freiburg down to 21 HP. He has got a Galil. So did Get Right and Forest down to 13 HP. And the bomb's been planted. In comes the push here from the CT side. Freiburg with two wow. huge frags. And what is that going to do here for Mithil? He's in a really tricky spot here, Kainite. Kind of. He's got to do something. He's got to pick up these frags quickly now before they push in. He is. And, ooh, I thought he'd managed to get at least Freiburg because of how low he was on HP. But I think this time round, Chewie, NIP are going to manage to get the defuse. It's going to be Forrest to uh, step up and defuse the bomb. And uh, there we go. 12-6.
Huge round there coming in for Nip. Obviously starting on the eco, only losing two players, picking up three rifles and getting the defuse as well. And just look at the money on Wolf there. They are really stuck for cash, really, really struggling here. And you've got to wonder what that's going to do to them now. And unfortunately, I've got an auto disconnect. All right, no worries. Then I'll 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 make sure. Ah, wait. I think I'm back. I think it was just Go TV lag. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Here we go. We do have the Indians on an eco yet again. It just seems like every time we watch the Indians play, they're just ecoing. Um, but they are going to go towards mid to B, where they're going to have both Forest and Freiburg to deal with. A Star has opened it up with one. Freiburg two already can't make it three, and you'd expect Wolf now to scourge into this B bomb site and get the bomb down. They have enough time to do it, Chewy. They do indeed, and Mythal's going to reward himself with that AK-47, but Fiflaren with the AWP shuts him down. A-Star is going to pick it up, but they need to get that bomb down. It doesn't look like they're going to go for it, and they're just going to let Nip walk in here. Rick's lovely shots with the CZ-7-5. Two versus two situation. They're going to challenge here. Just get the bomb down. Get that economy going for you. You know, you're really struggling for money here, Wolf. I'm sure their coach is going to try and tell them that, but again, you know, these guys are players. They are at Cologne, and I'm not. I'm just sitting here in my studio casting, so they're obviously thinking what's the best decision here and going for it, but if I were them, they need to get the bomb down here and force Nip to try and retake it and get the defuse as See, well. What they're worried about is that NIP are close by and on yeah. the ramp. And then when NIP, they're, they're worried that when NIP hear the bomb going down, like you can see A-Star doing there, it's good thinking from them. And they knew they had plenty of time to work with, but they really should get the bomb down now. <laughs> they can't let the time tick any more than this. Here we go. They can't, and in comes the grenade from Nip as well, trying to flash them. And let's see if they can retake this one. This will be huge here for Wolf if they can take this round here. Especially considering it was an eco. We've already seen them take an eco win earlier on. And that's going to be another big CZ75 coming in there from Rix. The AK-47 finishes off Exist. And wow, game on, Kyanite. Game on? Yeah. <laughs> the Indians, honestly, they've impressed me a lot. And I'm not sure what to look into this game. Because maybe if it was... I don't know, a Clan Mystic RIP from back in the day or something, you might think to yourself, yeah... NIP haven't really looked on point, but because we haven't really seen much of the Indians in the past, we don't truly know what they're capable of in comparison to this NIP side. But talking about this NIP side, easy peasy lemon squeezy, down the Indians drop like flies, and A Star is left all alone, poor him at mid, all by himself. And I think it's going to be the uh, man machine in Freiburg to take out the rest of. Uh, so there we go, 13-7. NIP starting to finally build a bit of momentum. And uh, we're going to jump into round 21. And we're going to have an interesting mixed yeah, buy. From I was Wolf. just going to say that was a really interesting buy because A Star had $5,000. He went for an AWP, but it looks like he's just going for an AWP and absolutely nothing else. Very, very interesting considering the rest of his team have only got pistols. And he's going to shut down Forrest though, so that's a good start. That's exactly what you want from a guy who risks things. And I'm liking this play from the Indians here. We'll see if it's going to work. They're confident because of their eco play. They've won two They know how wins. good they are with the CZs. I know, right? It's just crazy. It is crazy. So let's see what they do in round number 21 here. Well, Exist has managed to put Wolf, uh, Ricks down onto only seven points of health. But NIP, they're playing it deep. They're trying to keep their distance. They know that they've got the uh, weapons which are better at long distance. But it does seem like Wolf are going to dedicate towards a B bomb site where Freiburg has turned his back and turned his back at the wrong time. He's done the intelligent thing. He's playing it more passive now. He's fallen back, but he will na <laughs> nail one. He's going for the spray down onto the third. Out comes the 5-7. Uh, and it's three versus one. Mithil stuck between a rock and a very hard place. And Freiburg, he's been on point so far this game. Honestly, his rifle work has been brilliant. And I guess that keeps me happy because he is in my uh, ESL fantasy team. <laughs> well, there we go. Can't complain at that one whatsoever. And uh, on another point as well, I've got to say um, that that was actually still a close round there for Wolf. We saw Freiburg backing up into a lovely position there and showing his class and showing that he knows what to do in those situations. But still... Although the three nit players left alive did get those big frags, they were left on relatively low HP. And you've got to think if you know a couple of shots landed downrange more so on accurate uh, form for Wolf, they could have easily taken that round again, and it would have been 13A. I think it exists was only left on one HP. And here we go, A Star takes down Freiburg, the man of the last round to start things off here. And what's that going to lead to in round number 22? This is all or nothing here for Wolf. They've got to take this round because if they don't, it's going to land Nip on uh, match point.
Yeah, and it will probably force Wolf back into an eco, and they'll find themselves forced by him to prevent themselves from actually uh, losing the game. But here we go. Ace, he has a, a chance for a few frags, but he's not going to get it. And NIP with double the amount of players Wolf have. And I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's going to be 15 7 nip on match point. And Wolf have got a heavy task on their hands, but. You know, let's put this all into perspective now here. Nick were really the ultimate favourites. We talked right at the start of the game about how they were going to be the team with, you know, 90% plus, um, you know, percent of people thinking that they were going to take it on lounge. Having a look at the pick and predictions, it's 89 to 11 in favour of Nip. Um, so they've always been the favourites in this game here, especially considering the fact that Wolf, you know, we don't know anything about them. We've already mentioned again that this is their first international event. But They've really shown us what they can do. Seven rounds on the board, they're not going to be too happy about. And yeah, exactly, they have shown potential. They have done. I mean, let's not forget they're up against arguably the best team in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Maybe not at the moment, but back in the day, um, NIP were, were always the team to beat. It's just a shame that they've now never managed to get a $250,000 major under their belts. And I hate to say it, but I'm not sure if they'll be able to do it this time around either. But here we go. It's going to be the Rifle Beast in Freiburg to hold the mid to be Push exists, joining in on the action as well. But Freiburg is going to find himself a little bit surrounded. But Exist is going to come in and take out the trash with the M4. And here we go. Another headshot from Freiburg. Freiburg doing what Freiburg does best. And now Rix is one versus three. One versus three to save the game here for the team from India. Freiburg knocked down a four HP, uh, but with get right in for Flaren still on full HP, it's going to be a difficult one for him to do anything with. For Flaren with a lovely dragon orb, law, uh, dragon lore in hand. Actually, I really like that skin. I've not seen that before, uh, but doesn't matter because Freiburg's going to finish things off. GG's come in in the chat from everybody and in the Go TV as well. Confirmation of the score, 16-7 to 7 in favour of the team from Sweden. And, you know, having a look at the frags there, not too bad overall from all of the players from Wolf. They really put in a good shift as a whole team, but they just can't stop Freiburg and exist. When both of them drop 29 frags like that, there's just no way you're going to get past them. Yeah, they impressed me. And the thing is, they were up against NIP on DDoS 2. And Freiburg is like a dog on the... Uh, who were just waiting to be un unleashed on DDoS 2. He's always phenomenal on DDoS 2. And I understand why Wolf opted to go for DDoS 2. But I think it'll be really interesting to see how Wolf end up doing against the uh, losers of uh, uh, Hellraiser's Epsilon. Obviously, I've got no idea who's currently winning in that game. Epsilon are smashing them. I think it's at half time at the second, but as I, the last score I looked at, it was 10 1 in favour of Epsilon, and Shocks was just destroying everybody. So, uh, yeah, I have a feeling it's well, going to be my Hellraiser's. Well, that's down the drain then. <laughs> uh, I put him on Epsilon actually let's have a look at that so let's let's do that quickly whilst we've got people in the chat just as we wrap up this game so in group A I've obviously got Nip to take that first game which we've got confirmed and then I actually just put a bit of a risky you know bet on with my sticker I put Hellraisers and Epsilon I put Epsilon to take that one actually well the thing is Hellraisers have been boot camping for at least two or three weeks they all have 140 hours plus uh, in game which I which is which is what made them the favourites but Epsilon, you just never know which Epsilon Epsilon lineup will show up. Shocks obviously came out and publicly said that um, that they haven't been boot camping, that they haven't practiced as much as they'd like to have done. They obviously didn't have the best line of their lives at G3. But if Shocks and FXO are on point, then again, like I said, who knows what might happen. But anyways, we have the groups on the screen right now. Obviously, this is Group A, which we've just covered. We've got Nip, Hellraisers, Epsilon, and Wolf in the group. So, Chewy, how do you think it's uh, going to end up finishing? Um, first and fourth? I have a... F uh, I don't know, because again, you know, this first game that we're watching isn't quite over yet. I'm having a look at it now. We're in round number 13, and Epsilon are 11-1 up against I'll Hellraisers. Interest. What map are they playing? Uh, Inferno. Epsilon are on oh. CT side, which is, of course, more favoured towards them. But still, Hellraisers only picking up one round on, 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 on this map so far, and 13 rounds isn't good whatsoever. So I have a feeling that the way it's going to end up here is if Epsilon progress through this game, which is looking like it's going to be able to do. I have a feeling their game versus Nip could be close. I still think Nip are going to take it. So my initial prediction is going to be Nip, Epsilon, Hellraisers, and then Wolf. But I, I don't know. I don't know. 
All right, I think I'm going to put my neck on the line. Uh, normally, I'd say uh, I'd basically I'd say it in the same order that it is on screen right now. Nip Hellraiser Epsilon Wolf, but <laughs> with Hellraiser's 11-1 down, I'm not sure. 12-1. 12-1 down. Dear me, dear God. RIP my bet. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so I, I guess I'm going to put my neck on the line and say Nip Epsilon Hellraiser's Wolf. But, like we said, Wolf looked good, and with Hellraisers in the current form they're in, if they do end up losing and coming up against Wolf, then who knows what might happen. It's Counter-Strike at the end of the day. Oh, um, yeah. But anyways, guys, we're going to be back in a few hours' time with, I believe, it's gonna, we're probably going to end up with Navi London Conspiracy. Or, yeah, I would have yeah, thought so. I'm yeah. not too sure. I'm not too sure. We'll keep you guys updated, and just so you know, you can get drops from this stream. We are an official ESL partnered stream. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in a few hours' time.